Good morning. It is June 24, 2024, Cross Stitch Cats and Chaos. This is floss tube. I have no really idea until I go in and label it. So it's frost, fro, frost room, fro, fro. I obviously cannot talk this morning because um, I'm trying to get this done before I have an appointment. So I don't forget to do it. But I have help. It's criminal. You gonna say hi? Hmm? Oh, pathetic. He's a criminal. <clears throat> I'll just start off right off the bat with the cats. Um, huh, yeah, so Saturday, I went antiquing with my girls, and um, it left thing one and thing two by themselves in the house. Because cat, they can find things to do. They can sleep, as they mostly do. You do too. Calling me a liar in front of all of my friends. Yeah. So, say hi. I went to do things and um, got back. My daughter walks down the stairs and says, Mom, what is this? You know what it was. So, I go down the stairs and um, string. I have no idea what a string is. Thread. And at first it didn't click until I went down the stairs and turned the corner and realized that there's a trail of thread throughout my whole basement looking like Michelin, Mission Impossible tripwire through the basement leading into said room only to like fish wire, hand over fist is what I'm doing here and um, led to my sewing machine. Through the pot of flowers first. Now, mind you, the pot of flowers I'm talking about is my fake plant flower thing up here. One flowers that here one no longer exists. We're not going to go there. So it went through the flowers and landed up there. Yeah. Criminal number one is Celia and the Pirate Princess. She decided to, oh, well, mom's gone, because I'm trying to balance this, I apologize. Mom's gone, I'm gonna wreak havoc, and she did. So here is the remnants of said pirate princess. So now apparently I can't leave my crap door open because she was being such a good girl. She likes to look out the window but now she likes to get on top of my desk and find shit. Criminal number two decided to have a heyday with a new um, like bed thread over the arm sofa thing that Kay made me and I'll show that. I might as well show it now so you know what the hell I'm talking about. So she came up with this, she just, here, try this out. Oh my God, love it. I'm like, you could do this. So this is what the back looks like. Yep, more raw fabric, absolutely love it. And this is what the front looks like. This is a hooky thingy for scissor fobs, whatever. This is a needle book inside of it. It goes over the couch arm like, or you could wear it like a, you know. I feel like I should be like in the handmaiden or something. So it goes over the arm of the chair like that. Yep, I just demonstrated on my head, don't care. And where Loki became the criminal, it's got pockets, like a dress. It's really cool. It's got pockets. Um, where Loki became the criminal is this. It is a magnet pin cushion that goes right there. Pretty cool, right? Until said criminal number two that you just saw that was complaining about things decided to snatch said pillow, not once, but twice, and go all over the house with it because he thinks it was one of his catnip pillows. And he's like, I know, it's really cool. Why are, you, why are you bitching about this, Mom? I don't understand. So now I have to take this off at night, put it in a drawer, and I have to shut my craft room door so said pirate princess can't enjoy her view out the back window of the pond in Dream of the Seven Seas. Cats. Love them. And in, in all honesty, 
I, I will say that I've, and this is true, true story, fact. At my age, of all the cats I've owned, every cat I've had is amazing. They don't get on the counter. They don't knock shit off. They don't, you know, look at you and threaten you with a knife in the middle of the night until Sila. <laughs> She's such a bad influence. Moving on. Um, I don't have a lot of new things to show. I've got like a smidget of work in progress. I mean, just a smidget because I'm in between things. I'm finishing up a model for Diane at Silver Creek. And I just got the big one from White Jolt, White Jolt, whatever. And so I've been kind of balancing between the two and I've been epically failing right now. So um, yeah, it's it's been rough, a lot of in-betweens. What I did do though is I experimented with Rick Rack. <laughs> this is so god awful, I'm almost embarrassed to show it. But hey, this is how we learn, right? I mean, we didn't know, we weren't all born perfectionist or perfect sewing experts. So I found some Rick Rack to finish off, and this was a while ago. Uh, my little happy spring that I did from hand, heart and hand, heart and hand. And, uh, uh, you know, I need a distraction. So I, I hopped on the tube on the intrawebs and found, you know, how to finish Rick Rack. <laughs> this is a special little pillow it's going to be. I haven't stuffed it yet. I just, you know what? But you know what? I don't care. I laugh at it every time I see it because this is my first time doing Rick Rack. This is my first time finishing a pillow with Rick Rack. I don't care. I'm not in for this, for the perfectionist. I'm in it for it. If it makes my kid laugh in the future going, Mom, what in the hell did you do? Perfect. Mission accomplished. Rick Rack. Don't look closely. Okay, go ahead. Here's your chance. Screenshot. <laughs> and then blow that baby up. You'll see where my corners don't meet. And I'm not even going to show you the back because it's puckered. I had to go re-back and sew part of it down. I can see where some of it's coming out again. What a nightmare. I'm going to have to hand sew that. Yeah. Anyway, so thank God it wasn't anything. I mean, it's cute. But thank God it wasn't anything that's going. I'm going to give that as a gift. Not. Totally not. But I did finish uh, my F Your Mascara. And I've got little sewing clips on it to kind of hold it down. Ironed it. I mean, I just, I, I think I've come to the conclusion that I'm safe in finishing a pillow plane and sewing on the trim after. Yeah. I, I just started sewing and I'm already beating myself up. But I attached the eyelashes, I, 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 the eyelashes. So, you know, here you go. Whoop. Not perfect, but who cares? And this, I... I I'm trying to find the perfect trim, and I think I have, aka Lois Lady Dot, lover to death. So I'm going to be ordering some of that trim. However, I want her to include it in, and that will go to the new owner soon. I will definitely take pictures and show you the finished product. Hopefully do a tube with it before I give it to my husband to give to his coworker. But um, I reached out to Lois at Lady Dot and sent her kind of a small dissertation, poor thing, She's going to be like, good God, who is this cray cray? And explain to her what I want to do with these. Remember these? So a while ago, I had purchased some fabric because I want to go for that old Victorian type of look. And honestly, cannot recall if I showed the fabric or not that I wanted to use. Um, found it at the Hobby Lobby. And I'll have to fancy cut. I, I got like a lot of this fabric because... Let's be honest, I don't know what I'm doing. No clue. Swing and a miss. Um, but anyway, I'm going to split the alphabet up and do X amount on one fabric, X amount on the other fabric. But Lois has some between her Chanel, her mini palm, mini Chanel. She's got like a gazillion different trim options. I sent her a picture of one of those sweetheart trees. They're all the same dimensions and said, hey, what do you think for color? Because she has ballerina, which would go perfect with the color fabric that I did, but she also has vintage and she also has vanilla. So do I want to do three different trims? Break it up? I don't know. If that's the case, I, I, my OCD is going, I need 
a different fabric too. I need three fabrics. I got two fabrics. These are the fabrics I chose. So I'm going to have to fancy cut this one anyway. So Lois is, I'm hoping, going to help me out. Told her the color of the fabric. They're all the same in these kits. The dimensions are all the same in these kits. And I want to make these into little pillows. And I'm not doing Rick Rack. <laughs> Hell no, not doing Rick Rack on these. Nope. But, you know, I'll take the fabric out. You can probably see a little bit better. That picture is not really a good indication. But I like the vintage look of it. So the what is the fabric? Hell, I don't know. Some brown stuff. 28. Whoops. Excuse me. Santa took a plunge. Polar plunge. 28 khaki. Summer khaki linen. So they'll look similar, but they'll have their own individuality. That's a big word for Lori. First thing in the morning. Individuality. I can't even say it's low. Stop the bus. I want to get off. Okay. So moving right along. So that's that. I'm waiting to hear back from Lois. She's like, call me. I'm like, oh my God, Lois, really? No, hon, I'm not going to call you because um, one, I'll have you on the phone forever. Not because of you, because of me. Whoa. And <clears throat> I think if you had an email, maybe you could keep better track of it. I don't know. I, I don't know these things. Uh, this, the debate is still out as to what black I'm using for my swamp bitch. Um, I got some over dyed black from Brandy at Be Stitch Me. Love it. It's beautiful. But Kay sent me this, um, Karen colors. It's, it's not their water. It's like their water lilies. It's the same type of silk, but it's not as very variegated. I almost said variegated. Holy Moses, Jesus and Joseph. And I am an appointment and I got to drive to that today. Um, it's black, but you can't really see. You can't really see the difference that, you know, it's, it's, it's all black. She was kind enough. She got me the same damn dye lot, which is amazing, which is, you know, important. Check the dye lots, people. Anywho, um, Jules told me that she was going to use this in her swamp bitch. And I'm like, okay, well, that's an option. I thought about doing um, a sparkle. And I couldn't make up my mind. Um, she's a swamp bitch. She's got, you know, if you know, you know. If you have the pattern, you know, you know. So do I want to do the beads on the tail? You know, I'm not changing it because it's me. And, but I wanted that, I want to put more black in her. I don't know. So Kay sent me that. Sorry, that's helpful. See, look, that's helpful. God, Lori. And honestly, Brandy's Be Stitch Me um, hand dyed silk is just as deep as this one. Really, the only difference between the two, in my opinion, is that this one's softer, and I don't know why. I don't know how they do that stuff. All I know is that they make the magic, and I stitch with it. Easy peasy. Chuck E. Cheesy. But I have three skeins, and I could do some serious damage with that. Probably. Most definitely. Um, <laughs> last week was literally hell in Michigan. And temperature-wise, it was hell. And if you don't know your geography, your maps... If you're from across the pond and you don't know our states very well, and even if you do, kudos to you. We have a hell Michigan, a colon Michigan, and a climax Michigan. I'm going to leave that right there, right there. Those are the three that stick in my head the most. We also, I'm sure we have other quirky. We have a lot of cities that you can't pronounce. Mishlamac. Doesn't look like anything like that. St. Ignace doesn't look anything like that. Tequamanon, good luck spitting that one out. Much less trying to read it. Fun. Dare to be different Michiganders. So it was hell on week last week. Hell decided to expand its territory and literally set the whole state of Michigan on fire. So we had 
low 90 degree weather with a heat index of like 107. Why? Why? All I know is that Satan came back to earth, had his little pitchfork sitting outside and go, hey bitches, guess what? Your chesticles are going to start sweating and your holding from flopping is going to need to be taken off. That's all I got to tell you. Fact. I hate, 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 heat. Hate it. Actually, I would not do well in hell. I wouldn't. I had better go, like, get my penance all, all set. Got some needle minders. Big surprise, right? Lori's got more needle minders from different places. So this one... That one goes over there. A C by K, clay by Kim. Yeah. I have a confession to make. I probably already made this before a lot. I have a lot of these. They're a really bad, bad, bad habit. Um, if you have one and you look at the detail of these things, you're like, wow, are they worth the money? I've gotten more selective as to which ones I would really, really, really like to snag one of the group. But this one has, this is, a, I think, the North Star one. And if you can see right in here, my nails are terrible, sorry. It looks like a moon kind of thing. It's stardust, all, all the things. Wow, add that to my collection. Um, I have had some break, it's very frustrating. They come undone and I've been too lazy to glue one back together. But if I'm paying that kind of money, it shouldn't be doing that, right? Uh, Agnes, <clears throat> Agnes Little Minders, Agnes's Little Minders. I love Agnes. I've known Agnes for quite some time. Um, the last time I showed you a monarch, this time, um, <laughs> I snatched a stingray for a friend because marine sea stuff. And I fell in love with it so much. I'm like, Agnes, can you please make more of these? Because this was like a one and done kind of thing for you. But I got to have one because it's freaking beautiful. She's like, yeah, I could do that. I'm like, you're the best. You're the best. Squeal. So, which Kit Kat came in here? Oh, look, he came back here to complain probably. Uh... I got this. Oh, got him shaking. Look, look at his tail. Woo. His tail is made of Swarovski crystal. I did it. Yay. Monarch stingray. Now, the one that I obtained for another crazy stitchy friend is a, just a, a wee bit different, but not much, but it's close because I don't need one exactly like hers. But I had to have one similar. I absolutely love this thing. It's beautiful. I can't even describe it to you in person. It's just blingy, shiny, little, pretty little stingray. And the detail. Look at the button on the back of that. And then, of course, oh, me. Hi, Bubby. Come here. You want to say hi again? Or are you going to grumble? Don't look at me like that. Just pulled a knife on me. I swear to God. I had to get a butterfly. A blue one. So this is like identical to my Monarch, but it's blue. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. All right. This needle minder I got from Leslie on Stash Unload. She does these acrylic needle minders. Absolutely love them. Um, and I literally said Santa fell off the, the edge and did the polar plunge because this was the Santa that did the polar plunge. Uh, Hody ho ho. Isn't he cute? And let me tell you what I like about these. They're slim. Slim pickings. The minder she puts on the back is like one of those earth magnet thingies. And God darn, those things are strong. Isn't it cute? I love it. Perfect. This little red button those cracks me up. It's like, yo, Santa, lay out the liquor, buddy. I know it's cold in the pole, but for God's sakes. Um, What else have I got? Lots of things. All the things. Oh, hey, yeah. I embarrassed my daughters this weekend. Went into Burger King. Got a crown. My daughter was like, seriously, mom? I'm like, they're free, right? What's the problem? Kids, they have no sense of humor. I swear to God, lighten the load. 
Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> husband and I went into Wally World. As in, I, he can't take me seriously with this Burger King crown on, but hey, don't take me seriously. Um, I might bling that bad boy up. Why not? Went into Wally World to get a few things for an outdoor gathering we had here with uh, my family. It was my brother's birthday. And I made a quick list. I saved the list. This is priceless because it just shows you how asinine I can be sometimes when I'm in a hurry. Relish, hot dogs, hot dog buns, tomato, ice, um, a big bag of potting soil. No, we're not eating that. It just came to my mind. Worms, also not related to said potty and soil, but we're gonna fish in a pond, so again, we're not eating that. Um, a burger press, because my husband felt that we needed a burger press. And the last thing on the list is two squishies. Two squishies. We're going down the aisle in Walmart and he's like, the only thing left on the list is two squishies. I'm like, what? He's like, he wrote it. He hands me the list and he goes, where am I going to find two squishies? I'll eat two squishies. I'm like, what the hell is that? He goes, I don't know. You tell me you wrote it. So I'm walking through the store going, I have no idea. I have no idea. What are two squishies? I have no freaking idea what two squishies are yeah okay carry on two squishies he's like did you figure it out yet as we're going down the frozen food section i'm like no he goes you wrote it Lori. what the hell i'm like i know i wrote it and i don't know what i was writing was i having a stroke i don't know so i'm i'm mumbling like i'm some old person that's seeing ghosts in the middle of walmart going two squishies two squishies two squishies two squishies Maybe it'll come out to be too, too squishy. So I send a message to Ethel and say, what the hell did I mean? If anyone can read me, you could read me. What the hell did I mean? She goes, two squashes? I'm like, no, we don't eat squash. She goes, two, two squares? Two. I mean, we're all like, sounds like, we sound like we're on password, you know? Give me a, give me a sign here. Finally get into the aisle and I'm looking at it and I look at it closer and I say it slower. To squeeze. <gasps> it hit me and I yell in the checkout aisle, to squeegees! <laughs> and my husband turns around and looks at me and goes, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm like, that's what it is, two squeegees. He goes, I'm not getting back out of line to go get two squeegees. Whether they're squishy or not, I'm not doing it. Why did I watch my life? Mmm, my life, I swear to God, so many things. I got a new pop for my room, like I need help in here, but I'm running out of space, I gotta stop. I'm like 50, 50 something, I'm just say 50, I almost said 50, 50, 50, 50 something years old, chipmunk. And I like Pop Funkos, what can I say? But this one was really hard not to pass up. Can you see it, the reflection? It's Dino Pool. It's Deadpool. It's a T Rex as Deadpool. Come on. How can I say no to that? And it was on sale, better yet. Stop buying stupid things with your money. No. I found a new dyer on Etsy. And the more I look at her stuff, I some of it, no, but. A lot of it, yeah. I'm really liking it. This is 32 Count Lugana. And it's from a, a company. I think it's a one girl show. Banana oil. I really live under a rock because apparently that's a medicinal type of thing. I don't, I don't do that stuff. But look at that. Whoopsie. I guess it really doesn't matter which way it goes. But this is more green, but green, yellow, but it's screaming for the right mermaid. That's all I'm gonna say. And it's even weave. And I was talking with Kenny 
at Kenny Stitches and you know he was getting frustrated over some linen because it wasn't laying right and he ripped it out like I don't know a couple times restitched it and it just isn't laying right and when I first learned how to stitch I was an Ada whore and then one of my friends said you know you really need to try Cashel you would love it not so much you know, and I didn't have the heart to tell her that. I stitched on it, and I still, it's okay. You know, I, I don't really care. For, I know a lot of people love linen because of the flubs, and that's your thing. You do your thing. It's your thing. But um, I love even weave, and my stitches lie so nicely on even weave. I can't even describe it. I look at my, my four winter queens that I did in Mirabella and compare them to some of my stuff on linen, and I'm like, oh, God, I did a really shitty job on this. And it's really not my stitching, it's the linen. So I told Kenny, I said, you know, I've been kind of going back to Old Faithful more and more and more. If it's not a tighter, excuse me, as I'm like, I'm glad you enjoyed that, sorry. Um, if it's not a tighter Ada, I won't use it. Like a 18 count. Ugh. Thanks, Emily. Thanks, Diane. Ugh. But I'll stitch on 18 count and I'll stitch on 14. I'll stitch on 16 is really that happy medium. 14 I like because if I'm doing beading work, it'll lay better on 14, but it needs to be a tight woven 14. Even weave is my go to. I really do love even weave and I think, you know, I'm going to acquire more and get away from linen. Uh, I, Mindy sent me a copy of the children's room, the model that I stitched. And I'm so mad that they didn't listen at this because uh, I posted the video of the models of the two mushroom girls and the children's room. It literally was like a year and 13 months ago when I made this video not thinking that I should have done them separately so I could have posted them as they were released. Some people are watching these, most of you are not, and that's fine. Um, you hear me drawing on, droning on. Most people like to, most people are wanting to see the models and this is how I've decided to do it because I'm not a real big fan of posting my pictures and I've mentioned that before. Um, anyway, I gave them a heads up of, hey, I secured these beads as such, and then I ran the needle up through the beads to really secure those suckers. So they would stand up in a line and not be all, look at me, I'm all cattywampus. Well, stitching this on 32 count is not a good idea. I've posted it, I've said it several times. If you love 32 count and you just don't have any problems with the beads, consider yourself very lucky. Um, but there are some designs that need a bigger fabric count, and this was one of them because the beads are tight. I think that Swamp Bench needed a 28 as well because the beads in her tail are very tight. And the problem with it is, is that Mill Hill beads are not consistently the same shape. So if you really want it to look good, you might want to dig through your beads to make sure that the, the shape is similar. There is some, just look through your mill hills. If you have mill hills, look through them and you'll see how uneven they are compared to a Toho or a Delica. The, they're a little bit more expensive to use, but if you're looking for that, if you want to do that perfect piece and have it look perfect and you're kind of OCD about that, you want to switch to a Toho or a Delica. So I work with what I get and this is what I got and I just am I just am so angry at this. I don't know why. I think it's because it's a reflection of me and it's really not me. It's like when I sent it, it wasn't doing this. And now I pre-warned you when it gets stretched and framed, you need to fix this and they didn't fix it. Fix it before you take the picture. Tell whoever it is your photographer is to fix it. I'm calling it out, sorry. They did not fix it. Look at the bedpost. Look at it. Oh, I was so mad. I'm like, are you flipping kidding me? I 
can only do what I can do, right? I can only do what I can do. Moving on. The stories I could tell you about that one. Um, I received my next house series. This one is definitely eventually going to get stitched. I was I go ahead and I get whatever um, fancy flowers is required in said pattern. This one called for two classic color works, Barn Door and Manor Red. So Manor Red, the deeper red will probably get used because our doors are red. It, it's not the same color red, but it's close enough. But I'm sure everyone has seen this already. How adorable is this? Now, with the Barn Dominium next door, this would all be white. The door would be red. The windows would be black. We have a cupola on the top. I would have to change the top to, my, you know, I don't know, mimic a, the goose or something or whatever it is on top of our barn. But, yeah, I, I really like that one. That one's cute. And I don't know, I might just leave it, but... Either that or do the barn in white, in a two-tone white, so it looks like shiplap, and change the flowers to black so they pop. It's a thought. I have lots of them. Some matter, some don't. My Halloween, just cross-stitch Halloween collector's issue came. I ordered one from Barefoot. God love them over there. Um, they're the ones that I sent it with my automatic for my barn series. They're on it. They are on it. You want something? Boom, they're on it. So I got my magazine from, and this is, disclaimer, this is not their fault. Not their fault. But I'm that kind of person that will send them a message and go, hey, and send them pictures of, hey, look what happened. Not your fault. Just giving you a heads up that the post office doesn't care. They say we care. It's kind of like, you know, Monsters, Inc. We scare because we care. Well, you're scaring me with my postal stuff, but you, you don't care. So I got my issue, and I had issues with the post office with how it was received. Ooh, gosh, sorry, there's my address. I don't I don't know it. You want my address? Look how bad it. So there's that. And you flip it on the back side. And there's that. Why does it purposely look like that those bastards ran over it? Yep, I said it. The B word, sorry. <laughs> I mean, come on. And my apologies if you work for the post office and you're a really good postmaster. Um, they put this sticker on the top. Please handle with care. Do not jam, push, or squeeze into mailbox. Thank you. And I commend the ladies for trying to do that, to give them a heads up of, hey, this is rippable, obviously. Don't show a little bit more care in, in how you're handling this. I think they purposefully do shit to it. So this was, this was, I might as well, you know, cross out the word not and put do jam, push or squeeze into mailbox for them because that's what they did. So I took pictures and I sent it to the ladies and I'm like, you know, just a heads up. Um, not knowing that now just cross stitch includes the Halloween issue in their subscription. Well, that's fine because I know this sounds really silly of me and I probably don't need to do this, but I do get two copies of this. I get a working copy and then I get a saved copy. So if anyone, if one gets damaged, I have a safe copy. And I do this with the, just the Halloween and the Christmas issues. I know, really dumb storage issue space thing, but it's just me. So I sent them a thing and I, I showed them the pictures and I was like, just FYI, they don't care. Um, this is not your fault. You know, it came bent. This will probably be my working copy version. And, but you pay, you know, 10 bucks for a magazine. You expect the person that it's being delivered by to take a little bit more care they don't the girls were really apologetic and i said i'm not upset at you just so you know i want you to know that they don't give a monkey's butt about your sticker on the front um she said we may have to relook at this 
you know, we may, we may have to relook at this and how we're doing this. And I said, not to cause more grief on you, but you're going to get that one person. There's always that one person that's going to call and complain and bitch to you that nothing's done right. And to save yourself the headache, when I send stuff out, I put a piece of cardboard in my envelope. You can't bend that stuff. You don't got a choice. You got to deliver it to the front door. The, like I said, the girls were fantastic. And I said, I would just hate, you are you go above and beyond all the time. I would hate to see Stitchers get upset with you and you lose money resending and covering your butts because the post office is negligent. Very great conversation we had. So anywho, um, yeah, I'm kind of kind of over the post office screwing with my stuff. Really am. We scare because we care. Yeah, you're scary, all right. Um, works in progress. First of all, I got some clay by Kim's. Did I mention that? Yeah, I've been following Kim for years. And I just kind of looked in my closet and thought, I have six of these that I have turned into, I got them off of Amazon years ago, but I've turned them into Clay by Kim Dragon Beds. I've lined them with batting and I feel like, you know, a detective or a sleuth or a Mission Impossible person picking my tool when I do this. And I kind of had them categorized. I used to have them categorized, but not so much anymore because I've gotten L-A-Z-Y. I have no alibi. I'm lazy. Um, they're in little, you know, sections here. This is a this is a great thing. They kind of keep them away from the magnets, all of the things. Why do why do I have two in one slot? I don't know. Anyway, let's put you not there. But this one, anywho, is my Valentine box of dragon chocolates. So I don't, I can't tip it too much because they'll all fall out. Hey, Mindy, are you watching? Mindy's going to go, holy Moses, Jesus, and Joseph. That's just one. So, you know, I got cherry blossoms in there. I've got a little bit of everything in there. There's, there's one blue one in there. I'm not sure how he got in there. Um, these two are going side by side because the magnet is attracting. Maybe I'll opposites attract. That's what they say anyway. But um, some of these are really old school clay, clay by Kim's. And some, some of them are gifts. Some of them I pay for. It's a hodgepodge of everything. I would love to take the time to show you each an individual one. But I don't have the time. And... I don't have enough time. I heard someone behind me. Is it CeeLo? I thought I heard CeeLo. I got Loki stretched out there. Um, you know, some of my little favorites, just little ones that she's done over the years. Um, cherry blossoms are probably one of my second favorite ones. I've got a Valentine butterfly that, you know, I should just make all the butterflies in one. That one's one of my favorites. It's a butterfly. It's a butterfly dragon. How can you not love that? This one, I think Kay got for me because it's got a crown on it. Yep. Voila. All the things. All the things. I got another one with a crown on it. I've got some hearts, pink and red. So there's just a sampling of some of my Cleo by Kimmo's. This one is really pretty too. And I don't know how she does this. I really don't. Oops. I love the pink. I love the purple on that one. So again, yep, yeah, I've got issues over the years. Over the years, I've got a lot of problems here, people. And they have like a Clay by Kim, you know, detox center. I need to go to that. Clay by Kim detox. 
This one is really cool. It's iridescent. It's like pinks and a baby blue. It's just really different. He looks pissed, doesn't he? Get your attention. Leave that Kim yelled at me. So that's just one. And not all of them. So I will pull some out and show some more. And I'm going to gently set this on the floor. There we go. Uh, Kay sent me some more bags. Voila. That's one. That's two. I love this one. Look at the little fox. Love that one. I love them all, but... Um, a Teresa Coquit fabric. Teresa Nougat. Love you, Teresa. Coordinating in the inside. So pretty. This woman, I swear to God. Multi-talented on so many platforms. Work in progress. Couple. Um, I don't know as if I got any further on my Deadly Aquarium. Ran into a snafu. So, um, you know, I, I thought I was going to need a root canal. And then the endodontist said, you don't need a root canal. So that whole week was just kind of shot with anticipation, anxiety, and Jesus, my age is catching up with me bullshit of needing a root canal. And I didn't need one. Yay, me. Kind of excited about that. It's a big deal. So, um... That, I don't know, I just kind of threw my whole week off. And I don't know why. It was not, it's not a big deal. I mean, I say that. I didn't have to have it, thank goodness. But it just threw everything off, and I didn't like it. And it just kind of pissed me off. And my stitching mojo went, <whistles> like Superman, up, up, and away. Not good when I have two deadlines I got to get done. And then the whole time I'm working on one going, huh. I really want to start Mariposa. I really want to start Mariposa. I really want to start Queen Mariposa. And then I've got Leia in the back of my head going, no, you don't, bitch. Finish me. I'm like, I know. I know. But because it's summertime and the butterflies are out, I have not yet seen a monarch. Pisses me off. But um, the red admirals are crazy around here right now. And I had one laying on my hand. Got a picture of that. Literally, I was taking a video of several red admirals on one of my trees over here that I've got a fairy light on and one landed on my hand. I had one on my back, had one on my hand. It was an evasion. It was amazing. And I went inside the house going, oh my God, I need to start Queen Mariposa. No, I don't. And I haven't. And Emily's saying, retreat. Started at retreat this fall. I'm like, I can't wait that long. But I probably will because it will give me something to look forward to while my butters are all south. So just a little, just a smidgen of Leia got done. Just a little, just a little, like this area right in here got done. Literally disappointed. I did not get more done. Um, I kept, get, kept getting interrupted. So like I said, it was hell week and we invited the kids back over to the house because we have central air here. They have no air conditioning in this apartment. And I know a lot of older apartments are like that, but come on. No. I'm not going to have my kids sit in an apartment with a heat index of 107, dying, and, you know, no. So we had to come over, but lots of interruptions this week. Lots of interruptions, and that happens, and that's fine. I, it was nice having them home. It was nice when they went home. It's terrible. I love my kids until the end of time, but I know they wanted their privacy too. So I totally respect that. So I was trying to get some of Leia done to give myself a break, to give my mind a break um, from feeling the pressure of a timeline. And I got too many interruptions from, you know, hey mom, hey mom, hey mom. So I did get some done here. I got some of the, the Krynic blending filament the start of her capes. And if you watch The Incredibles, you know, Edna Mode, no capes. I keep thinking that every time I'm stitching it. No capes. Sorry, Edna. It's going to be pretty cool, though. So, anywho, um, 
I don't really have a focus piece right now. I do, but it's a focus piece that I need to get done. So it's, Diane's is probably like three quarters done. I sent her a picture last night. She absolutely loved it. That makes me happy. And I got part of the mirror done. Um, I can't even say what that is. I can't even indicate what that is. So I got some of it done. Um, a good chunk of it. But the good chunk of it that I got done, I'm not kidding you, took me a week to do. And it's a small chunk. And it just, I'm like, it's not going fast enough for me. I got to get in my mojo. That's why. Because once I get in my mojo and the flow goes, then I'll get it. Then it'll just come. And it'll spew out of my needle like a bad prom date. All right. I'm not sure what that means, but it means something. Uh, Deadly Aquarium. They're like into like, I don't know, part 5,000. I'm still finishing the frame and I started part one. I have never had a pattern that has made me frog more than this one. And I think it's because I'm excited to stitch it. So I'm rushing and I just got to take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. And slow my roll and enjoy it and not rush through it because I'm so anxious to get to the next part. It's not going anywhere. It's not disappearing. I bought it. Jeez. I honestly can't remember what I showed. So this is how far I've gotten. And because I wanted to work on it all the time. So look at the little skull. He's so cute. How can a skull be cute? That's morbid. Um, I Because I wanted to work on this all the time, I had to pack it up. I had to self-discipline. I had to pack it up. And I brought it downstairs to the craft room and basically said, like Cusco, no touchy. To so what I did. And if you know Cusco, if you know, you know. No touchy. And I pouted. And I got over it. And I'm no touchy. So literally what I'm doing, look what I'm doing. Packing it up. All the parts are printed off. All packed up. Loki's spending time with me in here. He's chilling out on the magic carpet. That's what I call the carpets or magic carpets. The kids go for magic carpet rides. Um, Lucas. Finish up with Lucas. If you don't want to hear about Lucas, that's fine. Um, that I respect that. This is his last week of the first film he was assigned to. I've been doing like weekly updates on Facebook as best as I can. Um, but anyway, this is his last week assigned to this film. He got his, he calls it his assignment, cracks me up. He got his assignment done. The producer loved it. So he asked, and I think I said this, he asked him to do the six variations of the assignment that he was assigned to do. Speaking of Red Admiral, there's one right there right now on my flax. Hi, buddy. Hey, go find your monarch friends and bring them over. Okay? That'd be great. Not that I don't love seeing you. I do. But I want the monarchs to come. Okay? Great. Bye. Um, anywho, six variations of the project that he had. He loved it. Last week was pitching it to the team. And by team, I mean the other producers, the full-time Pixar people there, all of the things. And the team absolutely loved it. This week, it's working with Harley to um, get this film, or get this idea in the film. And Harley is pushing for it big time. That's good. That's really good. I mean, that's, that's crazy, insane good. I mean, we were... What were we watching? Oh, some of the kids haven't seen Elemental. And so I had them sit down and watch it the other night. And I love the graphics in that one. The The art in that is absolutely amazing. It's like Coco. And Coco is like the best of the best, in my opinion, in art. But um, watching the film, you know, just thinking in my head. My son's there. Sitting with the Knights of the Round Table doing screenings with these directors 
director, directors, generically speaking, because I honestly don't know. And if I did, I couldn't tell you anyway, but I don't. And he's doing it. So he's a little homesick, but he's doing great. We check in more often than probably, but um, I think it's more to give him those pep talks and let him know, hey, we're still here. So anywho, he's doing great. And for all those that have reached out and asked, thank you. From the bottom of my little short toed stool heart, I appreciate it. It means the world to me and it means the world to our family. Um, he's a good kid, so he's going to keep doing what he's doing. And then after this week, he starts with a new film um, in his second month. So all that hard work starts all over again. What will this mean for him at the end of this internship? I don't know. Um, we're not crossing that bridge quite yet, but we are realistic people. And, you know, Pixar is Pixar, and I don't know if he's going to get a full-time job there or not. But um, I can say that he's the only outsider. All the other interns are from Oakland, California, or... Um, Los Angeles, California, or San Francisco Bay Area, and he is the only outsider from Michigan. He's just from a little town from Michigan, and what cracks me up is that a lot of the interns, when they said, you know, what college you go to, and a lot of them are like, oh, we went to the art schools, and we went to this, 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 and Luke didn't go to an art school. He went to Michigan State University. Go blue. Had to throw that in. We don't like the Spartans here, and these kids were like, what's that? Is that an art school? <laughs> so everyone on the west side has no clue what Big Ten colleges are, I guess, here. Even though Michigan State is huge. <laughs> University of Michigan, huge. Purdue, huge. All of these big, huge Big Ten colleges, you know, are like the equivalent of an Ivy League college in the Big Ten type of thing. And these kids had no idea what Michigan State University was. Now, granted, he didn't go there for the education for art. He's done that on his own because Michigan State University sucks in that. We have Kendall here in Michigan, um, but again, I don't think Kendall could have taught him what he's learned from people in the business. So um, you either have the talent or you don't. And I don't know, not bragging, just facting. Otherwise, that's it. He's doing great. He's, um, he's doing it. He's making it. I really have nothing else. Outside of what is this week going to bring until the next tube, I don't know. Um, I'm hoping to get, like I said, I got three quarters of Diane's stuff done, so I'm hoping to make a chunk, but I need to rotate out and I need to make some progress on the mirror that I have. Uh, I've seen all these people, all these stitchers going to retreats this summer, and part of me is like, I, I wish I could go to stuff like that, but I just, the finances, I just have to plan ahead. And the other reason too is, Sometimes I just don't people very well. I, I don't know. It's awkward. So there's that. And um, I really don't have anything much else to talk about outside of have a great week. Have a great stitchy week. For those um, that are needing some healing time, take time out for you and heal and rest. I address this to one specific person. You know who you are. And I'm here. So if you have any questions, pop them below. If you have any thoughts of positive, pop them below. Because I don't want to hear the bad juju. Ain't nobody got time for that now. Mm -mm, nobody. And if you have any questions regarding stitching, let me know. I, I keep saying I'm planning on like a back stitch tutorial. I haven't forgot about it, guys. I haven't. It's back stitching. But now it's a matter of I got to fit it in. So maybe it'll be a floss tube extra. But I am posting those models for a reason, guys. Go take a look at them. Um, a couple of you have sent me messages saying, you know, uh, how do you do this? Holy crap, this looks great. And I appreciate that. I do. That's why I post these videos, so you can look at things. Um, other than that, have a great rest of the week. I got places to go and things to do. So those are nice us. Bye. He's on his magic carpet. He doesn't care. Catch you on the flip side, guys. Oh, and sorry, my pillows. That's nasty. I don't have covers on them. Whatever.